Lots happened today. This includes early morning deliveries, a big pour, and the biggest event of all, placement of the first approximately 15 to 20 steel beams to start the building framing. Then the first photo shows the location of the first pour. While this was taking place, the double dump trucks came in with their loads of dirt to be dumped and left with different loads of dirt. One such truck got trapped this morning on a sharp curve and needed the help of a small bulldozer to get out. The second photo shows where the pours were. It also shows where the first beams are placed and fastened together. The third photo was taken from Cascade East to show the framing from a different view. And the last photo was from Talus Drive looking up at the new structure. Now that the framing has started, I had better explain some structure terms. Beam, horizontal member that spans a long distance. Strut, often angled member that can be used for compression or tension. Floor rafter, one of a series of horizontal smaller beams. Post, a vertical member in compression. Truss, a combination of the various preceding structural members. Of course, these are for a house. You and I are more familiar with these terms, so if and when needed, I will use them. If you are not the one stuck in the mud, most of us like to see the poor guy or gal who is. It happened today, as seen in the first photo. His friend in the excavator pulled him out. I think the mud was up to his axle. The other photo was taken in a brief spot of sunshine towards the end of work. I'll start sending plan views tomorrow so you can enjoy trying to match them up with the reality shown below Timber Ridge. Some days, it is hard to come up with good photos to show the continuing construction. Most days are like today. I have too many. But from the standpoint of a reader or viewer, it is best to neither underwhelm nor overwhelm. I'm thinking two picks a day, three at the most. The day started with several deliveries, but with the bright headlights of the trucks and the darkness of early mornings and autumn, we could not see just what was being delivered. The first photo was taken from Patty Fuquay's apartment on the fifth floor, Northridge, flying stairs on their way to being put into the stairwell on the north end of the classrooms. The second photo is of the start of framing on the south end of the one very big building that provides space for most of the school functions. In this case, physical fitness and locker rooms. I'm reminded that I said that I would send you plan views of the five floors, hopefully tomorrow. The third photo is serendipity plus Photoshop. I could not resist taking it and sharing it with you. Monday morning, there were no beams. Wednesday afternoon, they seemed to be taking over the whole building project. Tuesday, I attempted to define some common structural words. One word that I left out is girder. A girder can be thought of as a really big beam, such as a girder may have several beams attached to it, but a beam never has several girders attached to it. Plus, girders can be horizontal or vertical, and I guess that beams can be too. Somewhere in there is a pillar, a post, and a column. And what is the difference between them? Not much. I hope my definitions do not offend civil engineers. The big yellow American crane was repositioned to enable it to lift a new set of steel girders and beams into the gym area. Twelve girders were quickly fastened, one at a time, to the big crane and hoisted to their location. They were held up just long enough to fasten at the base for studs and bolts with a pneumatic wrench. The iron worker then pulls on a rope that releases the girder from the crane. I wonder if that release rope is ever caught on something while in midair, releasing the load to drop someplace unintended. The photo shows one such flying beam or girder. Horizontal beams were then fastened in place. See the photo. Much of the fastening is quickly and easily done because the girders come with gussets already matched. Okay, what is a gusset? That's what was incorrectly designed and installed on the Minneapolis I-35 bridge many years ago. It's a steel plate into which bolts or rivets are inserted and fastened to hold the structural members together. The floor plans were copied from the school district website. They are old, January 2020, but newer than the ones on the Timber Ridge wall. As for the total property plan view, the most up-to-date layout is the one that Bruce obtained that is on the wall by the Evergreen Room.
The change from the added beams and girders today is quite noticeable as compared to yesterday. See the first photo. And something else was noticeable. Lynn saw on the right side of the photo a large structure that looks like Lily Tomlin's chair. See the second photo. For the few of you who don't know of the famous comedian, Lily Tomlin, one of her skits was of a little girl in a very big chair. And then there is the Black Diamond Bakery with its tall chairs and table. Other happenings include the removal of a small office trailer and its replacement, a larger office. The south end moat was worked on, more rebar. Something that might be bumpers or guard posts was added to the bus turnaround and lots of deliveries of rebar, stairs, and more rebar. There were more Saturday deliveries of framework beams and girders. The big American crane was busy all day, unloading the deliveries and lifting more vertical and horizontal girders, beams, and floor joist bundles in place in the gym area. Ladders were used by the two iron workers to climb higher and do their tight rope act. Good thing they have their safety ropes and harnesses. The photo was taken Sunday morning before the fog. Several early morning deliveries but it was hard to tell what the deliveries were because of the lack of daylight. Silver coated or galvanized floor joists were lifted into place in the classroom area. It looked like forms were being placed in the driveway across the field. If so, the forms would be for a long curb and gutter. Iron workers catch flying beams and fasten them to the tall vertical girders. The American crane operator does a fantastic job guiding the horizontal beams into their designated locations. He must have a navigator of some sorts for guidance. See the first photo. In the early afternoon, a concrete pump boom arrived to place, presumably, the slurry into the retaining wall below the bus lanes. In the bus turnaround area, five bumpers now have the capability to provide illumination as well as be a barrier to buses going out of bounds. See the second photo. They have been electrified. Early this morning, there was a big load of rebar delivered to the south end of the construction site. This was a bit of a surprise in that it looked as if you could not get any more rebar wired into the moat. Up in the classroom area, the flooring, floor joists, shine like a skating rink when the clouds let the sun shine through. I'm guessing it's galvanized steel. See the first photo. Note the safety rail around the edge of the structure. From the big project down to the one person job, the five bumper posts are being wired for lighting around the bus turnaround. See the second photo. Note that forms have been added to the east side driveway.